So she's turned around talking to somebody there that's you know, probably Taz and his wife or somebody. And I said, Hey, Carter, remember I know Cole Bass? I, I told you, Carter turns around like a big smart face. She goes, I'm like, wait, way to not sell it, you know? Like it's. <laughs> MXPX Division. Uh, being an Ohio native, naturally, I had attended Heatwave 98 in Dayton, Ohio. I know you're on commentary, but do you have any memories or stories you could share from this event? Oh, yeah. Like, it happened. That's a great question. Like, it happened yesterday. I, I, In fact, these are the stories I always tell the wrestlers in the car. Uh, the first one, and probably the funniest one, was I. my ex-wife was going on the road with me, and she'd only done that once before with Ricky Steamboat during Thanksgiving week. And pretty much had a meltdown by Thanksgiving Day. Like she wasn't cool being away from home, didn't like it, wasn't a big fan of our business. So here she's on, but this is going to be a fly in and a fly out. I'm not wrestling because I'm off the elbow surgery. And I'm telling her like, okay, to, describing the people in the company, because she didn't watch it and follow. She was not a fan of the business at all. And I told her about, uh, 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 again, names always slip me. Um, Nicole Bass. There you go. Uh, I was thinking Asia, Chrissy. Um, uh, you know, Nicole was a, for a woman, she was a big, big, big person. Six, two, six, three shoulders bigger than most of the guys in the company and a sweetheart. I mean, <laughs> Nicole Bass was just a sweet, sweet person to be around. Uh, but I told my wife, like, you know, like whatever you do, don't be like overtly like jaw jaw because the first time you meet her especially as a woman right she takes her breath away she's a huge specimen and so we're in the lobby of the hotel and i've i've belabored this point to my ex-wife you know as we're you know what to expect from the different people so she's turned around talking to somebody there that's you know probably taz and his wife or somebody and i said hey car remember i know cold bass i, I told this car turns around like a big smart face she goes <laughs> i'm like wait way to not sell her you know like it's because <laughs> you know she had her hair all frizzed out and everything uh, another story there is, uh, that, that I remember vividly was we had sent for my monitor out one of the runners to get us the cheap little color television instead of an actual television monitor for, for me. Cause at the end of the show, of course, I'm going to throw this thing off the balcony. And, uh, so they go out and they get this, like, I think it was like $49 TV, you know, a little 13 inch color television. And, uh, we have it plugged in. And so the Taz and, and, uh, bam, bam match comes in the, collapse through the entrance way and we're waiting and waiting and you see a hand come out you're not sure which hand and another hand come out and then slowly here comes taz rising out and i of course go crazy pick the monitor up and throw it we're about 50 feet up and off the first tier and this television drops 50 feet smashes on the stairs rolls all the way down to the floor and it's still working. <laughs> like, are you come on? Like, what are the chances of that? Yeah, they, right. Yeah, they, they built things to last back then. Let me tell you. Yeah. Right. I told Paul, <laughs> you need to get a hold of that company. We do a commercial for them, but uh, <laughs> it's uh, and the other thing, the other things were like more personal stories about that show. First of all, I thought the show was a great show. Uh, it really demonstrated ECW, I think on a much larger basis than say uh, uh, barely legal did. in some of the earlier pay-per-views by this time, ECW started to get its feet up under itself. You know, our, our dressing room was now seasoned. Uh, they're familiar with the live cameras. Some of them are still getting nervous, but you know they're over those initial night jitters. And the fact that I wasn't able to perform, it was a, a, a night of pride for me to watch the rest of the dressing room go out there and really nail it. You know, really give the give the fans a great, great show. And for me, and I think Joey sitting up there, it was sort of this sense of okay, this company's catching. Like you can feel the company growing as, as we're doing this. And uh, obviously uh, it, for us, that's, that was our intention. Uh, you know, me as the big mouth and then Joey is the incredible voice of ECW and, and the fan base, that, but it didn't matter if, if it was Dayton, Ohio, it didn't matter if it was Philadelphia, New York, Pittsburgh, Buffalo, Fort Lauderdale, every place we would take that show, the fans in that arena, it was almost like, hey, we had contacted them online and said, okay, hey, when this happens, here's what, here's how to react to it. And when Shane comes out, boo him. And when Funk comes out, like, go crazy. And Because if you watch the audience, every one of those audiences reacts exactly as we would have wanted them to react. And I think that speaks for the professionalism of how we were playing those characters and what Paul was writing in his booking. Uh, the fans knew that they were the six man on our bench. You know, it's a basketball reference uh, that they knew that they were part of the show. <coughs> Excuse me. And they never failed to deliver, including in Dayton that night. It was a great show. 
because you brought up Nicole Bass, uh, I've heard from a couple of people over the couple of two, three years I've been doing this now that you know she was a real sweetheart, like a like a delicate soul kind of thing. I mean, I'm sure yes. she's been used to was used to a comment or two being thrown at her and some stares and some gorps and stuff. But I mean, the ECW uh, venues, the crowds, that must have been a whole other level that maybe she wasn't even prepared for. I mean, how did she take all yeah. the catcalling? Uh, I, I with stiff upper lip. Um, I would go to the gym with her quite often and she, somebody, I don't know, it was Paul or other people in the dressing room would say, go talk to Shane, have Shane watch your match, that kind of thing. And so she would always come to me for information. What I gathered from all those conversations with Nicole is that she wanted to be a frilly little girl uh, and, you know, dainty and, you know, be able to portray all that. And it just wasn't in the cards for her, you know? And so she took the assets that God gave her. And and really expel, expounded on. I don't think I'm sure at some point you might start to take it personally. But you know she had been a veteran of Howard Stern at this point, right? You know, you know, and, and some really hellacious things being said on that show. Um, I, I think she understood that was her shtick. But in her heart, if you could climb into her heart and ask her, I think she would have much rather been Franny out there at ringside than Nicole Bass. Uh, did she did she really actually want to be involved in wrestling? Or was this just a something no. to diversify herself or get some money out of it where did you think her head was at i, I think there was uh, once she got into it i think there was some point of uh of respect at what the guys were doing and, and having fun uh, i but no i don't think she was a wrestling fan per se uh, i think for her it was just you know like contemporary at this time china is getting a ton of press right mm -hmm. and china nothing against her uh, uh but she was minuscule next to uh, uh nicole and excuse me um you know joey by the way it's throwing that joey had one of the all-time great lines at a pay-per-view they had to call her asia because she's so much or, or they had to call her europe because she's so much bigger than <laughs> what, she had to call her asia because she's so much bigger than china right it was a, a great great line from joey and the kind of thing that he was capable of no i, I and, and her husband at the time um bob i believe his name was um Seemed like a nice enough guy interacting with boys and stuff in the back. There were times, and not many, but there were times when I would see him, I don't want to say like browbeat her or abuse her, because I think she could have probably ripped him in half if she wanted to. Uh, but just like, let me explain things to you type of thing. And, uh, you know, knowing her like I knew her, like when we would go to the gym, she and I, she would talk openly. You know, I just, you know, I, I, I do feel uncomfortable and things like that. And and it really was like a, a sad thing for me because I, I could tell she yearned to be something else. And like all of us, we have to make do with what, what we end up with, right? It's, uh, uh, you know, some things you can learn and other things you can't, but you know, you're pretty much stuck with what you have. And, oh, and, and in her case, I think that she would have, if she could have snapped her fingers, would have snapped her fingers and been Franny or, uh, you know, anybody else there at the ringside than, than what she was. But by the same token, I think she was also, and I think the ECW fans a lot of times slam her, understand she had no formal training. She had come into our business as a bodybuilder and uh, and was great at that. And, you know, but she she wasn't lazy. There was never a time that she went to the dressing room and said, oh, I don't need to know this or just um, just go out there and do one thing or whatever. She wanted to learn. She was trying to learn. And we'd get to the buildings earlier, me and Taz and different guys would get in the ring with her and work around with her and stuff. She, I, Again, like I said about Tori and Franny, uh, Nicole in her own way was really trying to learn. And I, did, I just don't think Paul had her figured in that way. Uh, just briefly, who suggested she get into wrestling in the first place and ECW specifically was it was it Paul mm. sending out the feelers was it a husband maybe who recommended her I don't know not no idea uh, my guess because I know at this time by this time she <clears throat> excuse me she had uh been on the Howard Stern like a recurring guest on the Howard mm -hmm. Stern show which was massive then uh and she was somebody that was known, even if you weren't a bodybuilder fan, you were hearing this name, Nicole Bass, just because she was such a, an anomaly in her field, sort of an Andre the Giant in her field. And uh, I don't know if we reached out to her, if they reached out to us, if somebody in the business connected to us. I, I'm really not sure uh, about that. But uh, I know that when she came, you know, Paul, it, it seemed like Paul was trying to put some time into her. You know, it wasn't just the, hey, go out there, do a choke slam and get out. She would be involved in a few things that was, you know, ramp get up a bit. Um, and I think had she stuck around, uh, and I can't remember the reason why she left it now that I'm thinking back on it. I think had she stuck around in a place like ECW where everybody was so 
open to teaching. Uh, there, there was none of this, hey, I'm going to keep this to myself so I can use it as a weapon against you, like had been seen in the other parts of the business. Uh, ECW really was an open forum that way. And I think we all understood that if, if James is coming in, it behooves us to help James get over because he's going to help us draw in the end. And, and it really did come off that way. And they, you hear the cliches of, you know, it was a fraternity or it was a family. Uh, it, I don't know which of those apply, but it certainly was much more of that than any other promotion I'd ever been in. And I think that behooved Nicole at that point. Uh, and again, I can't recall the reason for getting out uh, or when she got out, if there was heat, if Paul owed the money, probably something like that would be my guess.